So today's video is going to be something different. The other day, I was approached on LinkedIn by someone with a Chinese name. Let's call him Chen. Chen said he wanted a business associate in the States. I tried to find out how he found me, but to no avail. He specifically mentioned the company that I worked at and said that he was interested in computer security. But as it turns out, this was a lie. I'm going to document what happened next with myself and Chen's characters coming in to narrate, but first a little background. Chen wanted me to set up a profile in my name on a site called Upwork. Upwork is a legitimate site that allows people to hire freelancers for development work. Chen is from Shanghai, China, where Upwork and other freelance sites aren't really an option. So the deal was that he uses an account that I create, I go through the interview process, and he does the work while giving me a small cut. This is a relatively common type of scam, but I decided to have a little fun with it. I set up a DigitalOcean droplet. DigitalOcean is my favorite VPS provider that allows for a quick spin-up of powerful VPSs with a huge variety of customizable options from RAM, operating system, CPU cores to software, and more. I spun up a vanilla Ubuntu VPS and installed VNC, which is a service that allows for a remote control of another machine, in order for him to control the box. So what you'll see in a second is him accessing the VPS. Here, I was trying to bait him in by tricking him into thinking it was my work computer. I was hoping that he was more than just a scammer at this point and was trying to find interesting files on my PC. What you'll see next is him connecting to the droplet. You'll immediately notice a couple of things. A terrible interface and the Tiananmen Take Man background. As you can see, he immediately decides to check my IP address using the site ipinfo.io. That was a smart move on his part as he wanted to make sure I wasn't messing with him, which I was. As you can see here, ipinfo.io gives me away. It clearly shows that the IP is from DigitalOcean and that it's geolocated in New Jersey. If you're unfamiliar with social engineering, you'll be tempted to give up here. One of the keys to social engineering is to find your way out of a tough situation with a carefully crafted lie and to use that lie to gather more information about the target. A technical person would have called me on that BS explanation immediately, so I was taking a serious gamble seeing as this guy was supposedly a Shanghai Jiao Tong University grad, which is one of the higher technical universities in China. But it worked. I checked the IP and it was out of Japan. So at this point, we've worked ourselves halfway out of the lie while extracting two technical indicators from the victim with the IP address of his VPN exit node and his real IP, which traces back to a location in Shanghai near enough to the university he graduated from. We have quite a bit more information than when we began. Now he moved on to creating a Gmail account. This would be crucial for the sign up as he needed a Western inbox to create the identity and he needed one that was tied to my identity as well. However, Gmail wants a phone number in order to sign up. I spun up my favorite fake phone number app, TextNow, and created a fake number. Unfortunately, Gmail probably had those numbers on a list of unaccepted numbers, so it didn't work. Now let me reiterate one of the most important points. Take control of the conversation. You have control here. You have what the victim wants, you know his motivations, and you are in control of what happens next. You'll notice that the ProtonMail account was named Leosa64, a play on words for Tiananmen. ProtonMail also has the ability to log who logs in from what IP, which meant I was able to confirm both the VPN IP and his home IP. Confirming the indicators is vital. Remember, trust but verify. Chen verifies his email, which gives me his IP, and starts to fill out the details, which gives them to me. It takes him ages to figure out how to get my LinkedIn profile picture to the VPS indicating that he wasn't quite as technical as he was stating in his LinkedIn profile. He eventually pulls it off by emailing the picture to himself, hopefully leaving some useful metadata in the picture that I can extract. Along the way, I had requested to send him some fake address information to his personal email, which is another incredibly useful piece of information if I were interested in further operations. He now continues to fill out the information to sign up for the Upwork account, giving me access to everything he writes and allowing me to build out an incredibly useful portfolio. At this point, he is convinced that he's winning. 
when he's handing everything to me without me giving him a thing. It's vital to keep up the facade that the victim is benefiting while maintaining access to the victim and exploiting the information that he gives me. At the end of the day, I had tons of information on the guy. He had a fake address, fake email, and openly available headshot from me. He thought he had access to a new freelancing account, my real information, and my real computer. I maintained the facade, rushed him through crappy lies, and at the end of the day had built out the per perfect personal portfolio of the scammer. Eventually I had decided that I was done with it, shut down the VPS, informed him that he was an idiot, and shut down all of the accounts that we had created. I hope this video helps someone. It's vital to take control of a situation like this to avoid being the victim. Don't give up your own personal information, give yourself an avenue out of every lie, and remember the ABCs. Always be collecting. Take it easy everyone. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know if you like the stuff like this. I might continue to do videos like this as well. Peace.